Is this the first interview you've done or no? Uh, I did a. Um, a uh, while ago, I did a podcast. I I, uh, I was on a podcast, so it wasn't uh, there were no video. It was just uh, actually I did two. I did I did one audio only podcast mm -hmm. uh, a while ago uh, when I when I had just started my my channel, mm -hmm. oh, and I thing. did uh, a few weeks ago. I did another. Um, I did an interview on the on the YouTube channel uh, of a friend. Like it's really small. All right. That's pretty cool. What is this channel about? So the YouTube channel was uh, so a friend of mine is a, she's a psychologist. She's like a, a psychologist. Sure. And she started uh, basically doing like a YouTube channel about like she's she's just, she's doing interviews with uh, with people who I guess are in the. U I'm not quite sure. Actually, she's doing interviews with people that I think she finds interesting in the world in the universe of psychology. I would say. Okay. Um, and the other one she uh, in France or somewhere else she's uh, so I met her in uh, SF when I lived there but she's now based in Spain oh and the That's other cool. one is called uh, the podcast is called the crazy uh, fuck I don't even remember but I can find it but he, he, he interviews like all sorts of people like mm -hmm. like I mean me I was talking about social animal he'll interview like some like tech CEO he'll interview some like people doing like Yoga, like mm. it's uh, a little bit of everything. Yeah, a little it's bit like of everything. Interesting people. Oh, that reminds me, uh, you're you're a pretty social guy. One would say. Uh, is the interview starting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I would say, I would say so. Yeah. I have. I mean, you know, I think we all have. Uh, we all have. Um, you know, I, I'm social when I want to be, but I, I can mm. also be kind of a loner. Okay, but your channel is about being social. My channel is about. Uh, my channel is about being social when you want. My channel is about expressing yourself. Okay. So. You know, sometimes people tell me, yeah, you know, I, I, sometimes I don't want to talk to people or I don't want to talk to people. Mm -hmm. And my response to this is always to say, well, I'm not here to convince you that you should always be talking to people. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you that when you want to talk to people, you should be able to do it. I like that. And the example that I use is the, the water faucet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's irrelevant whether or not you want to open the faucet 10 times a day or once a year. What matters is that when you open the faucet, the water flows. And I think that a lot of people who self-identify as like introvert, mm -hmm. they will basically hide behind this, I think, false excuse of like, oh yeah, I don't really want to talk to people. I'm like, yeah, forget, forget about all the times where you don't want to talk to people. I'm talking about the times where you want to talk to people. So I, I think that's where I make the... I like that. You know? I'm going to, I have to send that to a, this, well, I'll send the interview to him, but this particular part, I'm going, the, the guy that introduced me to you because... Um, we had this this uh, this no, thing. I'm, where I'm, I'm loving because I really like how you started the interview. Thanks. Because you didn't tell me like, okay, it starts. You just you know you cannot just ask me a question. And at first I didn't know, it and I really like that. I really yeah, like it's that. been rolling cool. the whole time. <laughs> um, since since we were in the car. <laughs> since we're in the, yeah, I, so I had a hidden mic in the car. Uh, no, I don't have a mic. In the, I wish I did though. Um, but my friend that we. Um, we had you had you had thought you were speaking with a specific friend. Yeah. You were in you were actually speaking to somebody else. That friend, um, I I said like he'll probably like be down to talk to you. He's actually looking to film more videos in Austin, and you know I'm sure he'd be if you reached out to him, he'd be cool with that. And he's like, well, I'm not really like down to like talk with people. I'm like, okay, that's you know it turned out that he was like it's not what he was looking for. But I need to send that little bit of this yeah. interview to him because. I really like the explanation you gave because sometimes I feel pressured because I, I identify as a more social person, but I have times where I'm like, I don't want to fucking talk to anyone. Like, yeah. I, I feeling really bad or like, I just, I just want to enjoy my own company. Maybe it's not even a bad day. Maybe it's a good day, but I just don't want to talk to anyone. And that kind of grates against like, but I'm a social person. Like I have to want to talk to everybody. Right. Yeah. And I really like what you said there. It's not about, it's like a water faucet. It doesn't matter how many times you open it, as long as water flows. That's just that just cleared things up yeah. for me. And I would even say further and say that you know there, there is like settings where like you know you may want to be more social than others. Like for example, like mm -hmm. you know like when there's like a large party. Like I don't know. Like for example, like I don't really enjoy like big group dynamics. Like I, I, I mm -hmm. just like you know if, like often time like you know if there's a big party whatever. Like I don't like sometimes I feel that like, that when people are in groups like they. 
I mean, actually, we're not even giving like some hypothesis, but like sometimes I, I don't. It's not really my my vibe, you know. Mm. Like uh, going to a big party where it's like loud or whatever. Like I mean, mm-hmm. I'll go with my friends and I can have a good time, but that's not my favorite place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I mean, for me, like yeah, talking to people in my daily life is what I enjoy the most because I feel like I can really. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like the moment is uh, is almost like pure. I feel like sometimes when people are at a party and stuff, like everyone is like. You know, everyone is uh, wearing too many masks, you know. And, and, yeah, and, 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 like, and oh, who, get, who do I want people to see me at? And, and I get, uh, and, you know, it's, it's just like, a, it, it's not my thing, you know. But mm. then, uh, but then, like, you know, lunchtime, like that, that that's great for me. It's more intimate. Uh, so it's more, it, yeah. like, honest. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, like, I have times where I don't, I don't want to talk to people. Like, it's mm. not, uh, like, that's, I think that's fine. Sure, sure. So, um, so you're out here doing this subscriber challenge. Oh, what's that all about? So, you know, uh, a big thing in my channel is, uh, you know, I, um, I mean, what do they say? Uh, a big, what's your like, channel called, by the way? So my channel is called Social Animal. Uh, and one type of content that I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of are hidden cameras. Mm-hmm. And um, the problem is... Like uh, the one behind you right now. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem is, uh, you know, I would make videos of me, like, talking to girls or talking to people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then in the comments, people will tell me, yeah, but like, you know, you have a French accent or like, you know, you, if you look like me, like you wouldn't do this or like, they would like mm. basically discredit my experience mm. and tell me that. It won't work for me because I'm special. Exactly. Right. And so then I, I thought, you know what, actually, like they have a point. Uh, maybe what I should do is invite everyone, anyone to do this mm-hmm. uh, to showcase, you know, a wide spectrum of personalities and experiences so that next time someone tells me, well, it wouldn't work for me because this, I can mm-hmm. point them out. Basically, I want to build a library yeah. of like all, all sorts of interactions in all sorts of contexts from all sorts of people. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, basically I want to cover all edge cases so no one can, people mm-hmm. will be, you know, faced with, uh, with themselves, you know, and mm-hmm. they won't have any excuses. So if someone comes up to you and is like, I can't talk to girls because I'm short and be like, well, this guy's 5'2 and you're only 5'4. Like, this guy did it. You know, like, for example, uh, so, you know, um, after I did the, so my second episode was with uh, August, uh, he's, uh, he's an Asian, uh, Asian guy. The second in Austin or the second ever? The second ever. Okay. Uh, and after, and when I uh, published that, a few, uh, I guess, Asian, Asian guys mm-hmm. uh, uh, reached out to me saying that they really loved that video nice. and it really inspired them. Uh, one of them asked me to put him in touch with him, which I did, and like they, they talked. And on uh, Friday, uh, so the first subscriber mm-hmm. change I did here, I did it with uh, an Asian guy who told me that he also found that video very inspiring. Nice. Um, and uh, and yeah, so that, that, that's the basically that, that's the, that's the point. And also, and you know, and it's not to do it also. I mean, uh, uh, the goal is not to only do it with people who see themselves as uh, as having some sort of disadvantage. Mm-hmm. I also my goal. I also have people who you know are. Uh, who, you know, might consider themselves, like, fine, like, you know, completely fine or, like, much more social, exactly, uh, because I think that, actually, I would say that the biggest uh, group of people that I want to target is actually not the people who think of themselves as being, like, socially anxious. Mm. Uh, it's the wild majority of people who uh, are on dating apps and think that everything is normal, mm-hmm. but they cannot talk to a girl in front of them. Um, when I was, uh, when I grew up, whatever, like, me, my friends, like, I hung out around like very social people. I was part of like, I was part of many social groups. Like I was friends with like the cool, like, you know, I was like, I guess I was like one of the cool kid. Like it's not, like I never considered myself like an, like, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, how do you say? Like, uh, you know, part of the weirdos or Mm. like the alternative groups. Yeah, I was never considered myself an outcast. Uh, And I know a lot of cool kids. Uh, I know a lot of cool kids who look good, who have everything going for them. And, you know, they can't talk to a girl in front of them. And like, yeah, that, I have that, a lot that, of friends th- who are like th- that. That's really who I'm, like, you know, sometimes people, mm-hmm. especially in San Francisco, they'll be like, oh, yeah, like, that's great for, soft, for like, shy software engineers. And I'm mm-hmm. like, really? When's the last time you talked to a girl? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I have a lot of friends. Like, I have a few friends calling you out, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say names, obviously. I want names. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you after. Um, <laughs> but one in particular, he is like, he, he gets girls, but he gets girls that, like, through social um, places because that's how he can talk to them. He is, like, I would say, apart from me, he's the most attractive of our friends. <laughs> and he's, 
and he definitely <laughs> has better fashion sense than me. Um, and he's the he's the be- this the thing I say right now will make him know who he is. He has the best smile of any one of my friends, and I've told him that several times, so he knows exactly who it is now. He knows I'm talking to him. He can get girls through dating apps and through social circles, but approaching people he doesn't know it's just like there i've been in times where i'm in a social group he's like oh that girl's really cute i'm like go say hi to her and he's like no and that's happened so much and it's so interesting to 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 like see this person who's like i would say one of the most gregarious like like magnetic personalities in our group with the the biggest smile like super attractive amazing sense of style um and he he still locks up when it comes to girls like it seems like there's this there's this extra level of anxiety for heterosexual guys, guys that are that like girls when there's this when girls are introduced. It's like I'm not sure what what do you think that bridge is between like oh I'm just talking to a random person um, like I don't know my maintenance guy like I'm just gonna he's working on an apartment let me chat him up versus like oh this is a really cute girl. So I, I mean I think that um, I, mean, I think there's multiple things, but personally like one thing I realized um, by talking to you know, people uh, kind of randomly, like mm-hmm. in my daily life, so in the street, at the grocery store, like random, like, you know, randomly throughout my day, is I think that the main problem, one of the main problems that people have is, uh, is they don't relate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thing is, the more you think there is a gap between you and other people, the harder it's going to be for you to jump that gap. Mm-hmm. And I think that most of our lives, we have uh, met people through very strong context. Okay, so family, mm-hmm. school, friends of friends. Mm-hmm. work uh, and you know what happens is that when you are used to, because we're so used to meet people through st- strong context we use those contexts to relate to each other uh, we're both in the same class mm-hmm. we both dislike this teacher we're both we both do like you know soccer practice mm-hmm. um, and you know I think uh, it's very interesting because when I started like talking to people randomly it really forced myself to ask deeper question or I would say more fundamental question about what is it that you actually have in common with people Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, they fall for the easy answer of like, I think a lot of people, they try to, to, to answer that by like having like what they would say, like deep conversation mm-hmm. or, they, or, they, or they think that, you know, if they, if only they reveal like, you know, deep things about themselves, mm-hmm. like suddenly they'll connect. I have um, a deep fear of this or of abandonment. You yeah, know, just like or, just met this person. Or, 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 or like, you know, they'll tell you about their childhood and so, but I think that things are much more nuanced uh, mm-hmm. than that. And yeah, I think that, um, I think that the, the, that's one of the reasons I think that talking to people in your everyday life is very, um, is very, uh, is very interesting is that I think it teaches you, it forces you to, to empathize uh, at a much more fundamental level mm-hmm. of like, you know, what is the common shared experience that I have with, everyone, anyone who's around me, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that, personally, I think that there's two fundamental truths that people forget. Uh, the first one is that, you know, you didn't choose your life, okay? You didn't choose your genes, your birth date. You didn't choose the solar system. I did choose my shorts, though. <laughs> you didn't choose, you know, the solar system, the construction of the atom. Like, you were mm-hmm. just born into this world, and you're trying to make the best of it, and everyone is. Um, sometimes you may take terrible decisions, but, you know, life is confusing and mm-hmm. everyone around you is trying. Uh, the guy who, uh, you know, the, the, the killer is trying, the drug addict is trying, the entrepreneur is trying. Like, people sometimes get very confused, but, you know, everyone was a two-month-old baby once. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's one. And the second thing is, you know, I think that we, everyone you meet, you know, we all have different life experiences, different mm-hmm. things we like, different, di- different things we dislike. But we all experience our lives through the same 15, 20 emotions. Okay? Mm-hmm. We all know what it means to be anxious, mm-hmm. to be stressed out, to miss someone, to get excited about something. Different things might trigger diff- you know, different emotions in us, but it's all the same emotions. Uh, and I think that a lot of people, because of this, mm-hmm. like, this is my theory, right? Like, I'm not saying this is mm-hmm. like the... You know the hard truth. Uh, from, You're not the arbiter from, of truth. Yeah, you didn't but, create the world. No, I did not. But okay. uh, but I think that because people are used to, you know, to relate to like those contexts, um, they basically they, they don't realize that they share actually like much more with people. And and I think that when you don't do that, when when you don't, and, and that's what I said earlier. It's like if you think that people are far away from you, if you. 
Because, you know, instinctively, when you look at someone, all you see is different, right? Mm-hmm. Like we, we look different, we, we, we carry ourselves differently, mm-hmm. we speak differently. And so you I have think more that, hair than I do. Exactly. So I think that, uh, you know, our mind just focuses on the differences. Mm-hmm. And so therefore we think, oh, you know, like, wh- what could I possibly say to this person, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, what could I say that could... Um that could get us to be talking about the same thing. Like there's, um, I was inspired by our subscriber challenge, which I actually want to get back to that because this could be yeah. a way for you to, since I'm going to release this um, probably today, or to, probably tomorrow, not today, but I'll probably release this tomorrow or the next day, you're going to get some opportunities to get some more subscriber yeah, challenges. Yeah, for sure. Um, but after our subscriber challenge, I was really motivated to talk to more people in the next few days. And there was this guy yesterday at the kebab shop that you were at, that I picked you up at, um, and he was sitting down, and I walked in, and he was like, hey, like, I, have, I have something to ask you, and he, um, he had like a very thick accent, uh, turns out he was from um, Dubai, and he has a couple businesses here where he sells gold, like gold jewelry and stuff, okay. and he's looking to hire somebody, and he was like, I want to hire somebody that speaks Arabic, do you know anybody, and it's like the randomest question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I actually didn't even I didn't even start that conversation, but um, normally I would have been like no, sorry, and like left. But I was a little bit intrigued and and kind of primed by our by our our subscriber challenge, and I'm like okay, let me like sit here and like ask. Him. I'm kind of curious now, like what's it like having a business like going from Dubai to here? Like how often does he come? And so we had like a short conversation as I was waiting for my kebab. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. About the subscriber challenge, what is that? I know what it is, but it's so I, it's an exposition for the audience. So basically, so as I said, like I, I want to showcase uh, a variety of uh, personalities and experience uh, of people, you know, talking to other people. So you know, uh, whoever you are, basically, what I do is uh, I'll meet you. You know, I, I meet with the person, and we spend you know four or five hours walking around, uh, and you know, you will basically be talking to some people, and I'll film you, uh, and then you know, depending on your sensibility and what you want, uh, you know, you'll talk to basically whoever you want, whether you want to, you know, like some people, I mean, a lot of guys, a lot of single guys, like they'd rather talk to girls, but um, I, I've done this with um, with people who were in relationships with, with women. Uh, and so the goal is to basically film you, talk to people uh, and, you know, basically show your experience. And obviously like as the day unfolds, uh, I, know, I, I try to help you uh, as much as I can, um, and uh, that, that, that's basically what it is. It's like yeah. talk to people for a day, or like yeah. for an afternoon, really. Yeah, so we, when we went, um, I talked to girls, because I like girls, and um, hopefully they like me, some of them do. <laughs> we talked to like, what, like, to, like, you talked to a lot of, like, maybe, I want to say 15, 20 people, like, so something like that. Yeah, yeah. so it's pretty... And um, you, uh, there are a couple of concepts that really stuck out to me, because I'm a person that... I'm rusty, which is why I uh, was like, really excited for this uh, subscriber challenge. Um, but there was a time where I had zero problem talking to anybody, especially when I was at university, because it's all walking distance. There's always a ton of girls around. And so it's a context. It's a very strong yeah, yeah. context. And it's a very strong context. So I'm a little rusty now that I'm in a, a large city. And even for me, somebody that has a lot of experience talking, like, what, what some people call cold, cold approaching girls, or just like talking to women, talking to girls I'm attracted to. There are some things you brought up that I really liked. One of them was laying, like, somebody else might try to put forth a narrative about what you're doing, and you don't have to accept that narrative, yeah. and you can come in from the side with, like, a joke or something. Yeah. Um, so what, what, uh, what was that about? Mm. So I think it's very interesting, you know, so... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer with something I have in mind because okay. I'm, I'm, edi- I'm currently editing the, the first one I did on Friday. Sure. And you know, I have a very, uh, I would say, um, symptomatic approach of observation. I, I, I really think that it's important to realize that everything is a symptom of something else. Like everything mm-hmm. arises from conditions. Uh, and you know, a lot of times, you know, you, when people start or, and you know, sometimes it, it, it can happen to me as well. Uh, you know, someone walks up to another person, they say something. And, um, and, you know, at the first little bump, they're mm-hmm. going to, like, crumble, you know. Mm-hmm. And really what it shows is that they don't really believe what they're doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically at the first, so they have a narrative, but it's a very weak one. And so if the other person introduced, like, a little bit of, of doubt, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. then you know it's like uh, then they, they don't know oh, okay sorry like you know they, they don't know how to uh, mm -hmm. they, they don't know how to how to handle it so maybe they may, maybe what they're not comfortable with is the the expression of desire maybe it's the mm -hmm. fact that they're talking to a stranger uh and i think that you can really tell you know when you look at someone interacting like you know what uh you know what what is going on and um And like, and I think that there is moments where, uh, yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'm just thinking of a moment. This was a long time ago. Um, I was in San Francisco. I entered this uh, Uber pool. So mm. it was a long time ago. And uh, I used to drive Uber pools. And so there were a woman next to me, and uh, you know, it was like around lunchtime or something. And I wasn't even like, uh, you know, at the, at the moment, I wasn't like. Hitting on, like I, I just said, like I don't remember what I said, but I said something to her, like mm -hmm. "Hello" or "Oh, are you going to lunch?" Or, I, I was just making conversation, mm -hmm. and uh, the woman, uh, she, what did she do? She, um, I think she didn't hear me, and then she like, she like, uh, she like, she like removed her headphones, mm -hmm. and and I felt, and at that moment, I had like a. You know, it's like my mind like paused, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and I and so on one side, I I re saw myself. I saw myself in the past being like, oh, like she didn't hear me, yeah, and like being like, oh no, it's weird, like oh so, nothing, like sorry, whatever. And then she was like, what? And and then I just joked her. I was like, oh, sorry, are you having some like you time? And then she laughed. And actually, that day she was coming back from her honeymoon. Yeah, like, we talked the whole ride, um, and. Yeah, basically what I'm saying is, um, I don't know if that really like fits into what you were asking me, but basically what I'm saying is that, you know, the way the way you behave uh, arises from from like the narrative that's in your mind, mm. and and if and if that narrative is not, if you don't really believe in it, uh, you know, your actions are gonna be mm. kind of, um, you know, you're not gonna be grounded basically. Mm. Uh, and there's also like. There was a, a, I was approaching these two girls, like they were kind of walking away and I like, this was during the subscriber challenge and I kind of ran up to them and I'm like, hey, like you're really cute. And one of them turned around and kind of like, went like that. Mm. And then, okay, and then you were like, well, she has this narrative that you're going up to bother her and that, like that's the narrative that she has and you're reacting to it in a little, a little bit because you... Like you're you know you're not, but you're kind of, you're accepting you're her accept, narrative, yeah, exactly, even yeah. though you know that's not what you're doing. You're yeah. not going up there to bother her. You're going up there to give her a compliment and see if there's some kind of overlap yeah. here. Yeah, and, and for example, like I, I had other when I'm thinking of like uh, some other challenge I did, especially uh, uh, the, the two first one where you know sometimes it happens like uh, someone you know so the, the person is walking to a girl mm -hmm. and they're saying something like they're saying hey or hello or whatever mm -hmm. and the, and the other person just like keeps walking right. Mm -hmm. um, And and then the person who's trying to do the talking, they just let the person go, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you didn't really believe what you were doing because mm -hmm. if this person was a friend of yours, like you mm -hmm. know, let's say there is a friend of yours who's walking by and you say hello, and they don't like acknowledge your existence. Yeah. Like if you're trying to talk to someone and they don't acknowledge your existence, and you let them go, like that means you don't believe what you're doing because mm -hmm. otherwise the normal reaction is to be hey, hello, you know, like to yeah. capture their attention. And then if they don't want to talk to you, then okay, but at least like, yeah. you know, you, at, at least you, you should believe in what you're doing enough that, you know, they, they're mm -hmm. acknowledging like your existence, you know? Yeah, because when it comes to anyone, it's like, I just want to talk to you. But when it comes to girls specifically, it's like, hey, like, maybe there's a spark here. Let's open up a dialogue and see, like, see where this goes. And if you're like, if you're coming with that intention, like, hey, I like you. Do you like me? Let's chat and find out. You're it's kind of weird for you to be like, oh, I like you. And then like, she just kind of like, doesn't, you know, you want to, you want to, if you get her attention, then the answer might be no, but at least you get an answer. And that, cause that's your intention is to find that out. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that when someone, you know, when I see someone doing that, like mm -hmm. hello, and they just get ignored, mm -hmm. uh, this just shows me like for me, just a symptom, like, oh, okay, like this person, you know, they don't really believe what mm -hmm. they're doing. And so they need to one, challenge their inner, like, change their perspectives and, you know, and, and try again until they, mm -hmm. 
until they sort of like accumulate new experience and they, and they crystallize new perspectives. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, this is this is not something that I think you can just sort of like intellectually resonate about, and then you know there's a switch, right? It's mm-hmm. it's a combination of of uh, of like self reflection and, and and action, which mm-hmm. then you know accu- you accumulate experience. And so the best we could do in this video is plant seeds in people's minds. So that when yeah. they go out and they talk to people, whether it be like hitting on girls or whether it be just talking to people in the subway or wherever they are, like if they're getting groceries, you, you can plant the seed in their mind. It's like, hey, like sometimes you, you might not get their attention and, that's, and what you do there is a reflection of how, mm-hmm. yeah, how much do you believe in what you're doing. Yeah, I, I, I really think that... So yeah, I would say that having a, a good... Uh, Framework is, is like, I would say it's paramount because mm. otherwise you, you know, you, you don't understand or like, you know, you don't have a good way of like thinking about like what's going on. Mm. And yeah, I do think that the way in which people react to you, I think that your social interactions are, are really your mirror. You know, like a lot of people, you know, they, they, they'll try to talk to someone and that person is not going to be responsive and they'll, they're saying like, oh, you know, like, you know, it, it doesn't work, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's actually the example that I, I remember telling you this example. It's, it's like you're playing tennis, right? Mm-hmm. You do not yeah. control how the other person is sending the ball back. And really, you shouldn't really worry too much about that. What you should really worry about is, are you sending the ball where you want to send it? Uh, and if you're very honest with yourself, I think that more often than not, you will realize that the interactions that, did, that didn't work out, or I would say the interactions that you're not very happy with, um, you have a lot to... You know, you, you have a you have a lot on your plate before uh, before like you know blaming others or mm-hmm. before saying oh it's impossible, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, as as an Uber driver, I can't count the amount of times where somebody comes in and they're either in a bad mood or they're just quiet, and I start talking and they either give like one word answers or ign- if they ignore me, it's their ride; they paid for it. I don't push, but. I'll try a couple times, but if they give like one more answer, it's not so much like, I, and I just like keep coming at them with a lot of energy and like maybe make a joke or two, or maybe I just start talking about my life. Like if they're not talking, I'll talk about my life and then like mm. ask them for input because then I'm feeling, I can't, I can't make them, I can't make them tell me what's going on or like make them be open, but I can be open and invite them to be open. Mm. And that way, I, like if, if the, if the opportunity or if my intention is let's make a fun interaction, let's have a, let's have a good time together while you're in the car here, then I'm throwing uh, in your metaphor. I'm throwing the tennis ball right there at like good interaction mm. territory. And I don't care if they're not giving anything back. Mm. And I can't count the amount of times that I've done that. And then like after a minute or two of that, like, they just open up and yeah. then we have an amazing conversation yeah. for however long the ride is when if I decided to stop, like they just, you know, if I decided to accept like, oh, she just, or he or she just doesn't want to talk because I don't hit on my passengers. But if he or she just doesn't want to talk, yeah. then like if I just decided, then that would be where it stays. Mm. But I, I would be, I, it's, it's almost like I just let, the, let them hit the ball into my court and then just let it go. Like that's just me giving up the tennis game. I think, um, yeah, I, I think that like, uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I think what you're saying is interesting, and I would like to add something a bit like on the side. Is that okay. I think that in the short term, sometimes you're going to talk to people, and you know they're not gonna, they're not, they're gonna not. So, I actually, I want to say three things. Sometimes you're going to talk to people, and they're not going to want to talk. Mm-hmm. And that's that's okay. Like in mm-hmm. the short term, I think in the long term, though, uh, I believe that you know, like there is so many ways that you can. Um, enter an interaction, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that there is always a way to open people. Uh, it's just that sometimes, you know, you may come from the wrong angle. And so, mm-hmm. you know, for now, like in that particular situation, in that particular moment, like mm-hmm. it's fine, like, you know, you can, you can let it go. But, uh, but next time, you know, when you're in another situation, um, mm-hmm. I think you can always like, you know, you, 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 you can always uh, sort of like um, find a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that also goes back to the, the story of narratives. Uh, it's like sometimes when you talk to someone and they have a narrative that, you know, you're annoying them or mm-hmm. they have a narrative or, or you know, maybe they're going to say something to you and, and you're going to get the narrative that maybe, you know, they're making fun of you mm-hmm. or that you're annoying them or whatever. And, you know, then it is up to you to um, either basically accept their narrative mm-hmm. and either apologize or say, oh, OK, or whatever, or, uh, you know, sometimes take some take some 
distance and, and come from another angle, kind mm -hmm. of uh, the way you would do it with, with kids, really. Like, I mm -hmm. think it's really important to realize that we're all kids, it's just that we're aging. Like, our body is aging, but I think that, you know, emotionally, like, we, we, we're all kids. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, like, people might think they're in, like, a certain state of mind and they don't want to talk or they're like this or they're like that. And then you can either accept that or, you know, you can realize, like, it's okay and maybe you can, like, you know, mm -hmm. come from, like, another another angle and, and you know, they, they open. I'm trying to think of an example where that happened in my life. I'm sure it's happened. And, and I think that, that, that also, you know, that, that also happens with, like, I think, uh, you know, like jokes and, like, I, I have a joke that I, I, I sometimes tell the... Um, tell people that I, I think is a is it, I think it's a good example of like not accepting the narrative mm -hmm. so once and this was like a very casual uh, joke like I was with sure. some friends and uh, and uh, oh, is everything yeah yeah it's all good um, that one's still recording and all this means is that it does it in 30 minute increments I see um, and I was keeping an eye on it but it just means there's just a couple minutes where I'll have just a wide shot mm. I'm gonna check on that just to make sure that's going on uh, but yeah, so the, I, I was keeping an eye on that, and it was just uh, fascinating. Yeah. So here it's saying it's 30 minutes and 34 seconds, so it's literally a couple seconds cool. when that was not recording. Um, so, so, so for the... Let's see where the battery level is. Yeah, we're good. So this, this is like a, a very like uh, small example, but I, I think it illustrates... It's a bit of a weird example, but I think it illustrates the point of like... Uh, Let me just check your, your thing, make sure that's yeah. still going. Yeah, we're good. Um, you know, like I, uh, so I was with some, so, you know, I, I love, uh, one of my like pleasures is, uh, I, I love like jokes, like situational jokes. Like mm -hmm. you know, I, I love to like whatever. And so one day I was uh, walking, we were walking, um, it was, uh, yeah, we were walking, uh, it was in SF. This was like a while ago in San Francisco. I was walking with uh, two friends and uh, I don't know, I was, uh, I was talking to, we we're having some argument or we we're doing some, like, we we're talking about something. And one of them says, yeah, Ruben, uh, whatever, like, I have a bigger dick than yours. And instantly I was like, yeah, but I use mine more often. And so, you know, like, I think it's a good nice. example of, like, you take something, you know, and, and whatever, this is, not, we're, we're not we're talking about, like, dick size and whatever, but, like, I, I think it illustrates because it's, like, the, the first statement uh, has Mine's a narrative. <laughs> the first statement has a narrative and, and, uh, and I would say a, scale, uh, a value system, mm. right? The narrative is, I have a bigger dick than yours, and the, and the value system is, the bigger dick, the better. Mm. And then, instead of accepting that, so I could have said, uh, I could have just, like, ignored it. Mm. I could have said, no, 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 I have a bigger dick than yours. But instead, what I did is, I completely changed. The value system. I, I, I completely changed yeah. the version. I was like, yeah, but I, I, uh, I use mine more often. And so... He, there were no comeback like he couldn't come back from this yeah. and like the, the, so we started laughing and like, I, don't know, I felt that it was I felt like that was such a great comeback yeah it's like you're playing chess you're like no fuck that and you're like just wipe the pieces off the table it, it, exactly and so and so and, and that happens a lot in conversation where you know like um, it's like what game do you think you're playing and that's and, a lot better when people say like it's just the motion of the emotion of the boat and then you just like no fuck it like it's I just use mine more that's a much better comeback mm. and, and and actually like now that we're talking about this um, about dicks no no about <laughs> about like games yeah. I think that uh, something is very telling is uh, you know I think a lot of people they think that they need to be more confident okay? mm. uh, and I think that is. I think being confident, uh, we can talk about, you know, what is confidence and being mm -hmm. confident. Like, yeah, for sure, you, you need to be confident. But I think what's interesting is what does the fact that you think that you need to be more mm -hmm. confident tells you about yourself? Because one day I realized that, you know, my best interactions in my life, you know, one day, like, I was probably, like, looking at a girl, like, on a bench or something, and I, and I couldn't do it. You know, I was, mm -hmm. like, in my head. And, you know, after being, like, frustrated for a while, I started thinking, like, you know, like, wh why can't I do this, you know? And, you know, so th the first realization is your best interactions in your life, you know, they're not characterized by confidence. Mm -hmm. okay, when you're with your closest friends, with close family members, mm -hmm. you don't feel like a bowler. You, you feel chill, like you're relaxed, you're comfortable. You can talk about anything. You're not really worried. Uh, you're chilling, right? Mm -hmm. And so now the question is, shouldn't you try to emulate that instead of like this feeling of confidence? Mm -hmm. and so then I so comfort. Yeah. Comfort more than confidence. Yeah. And so say. then I started thinking, okay, 
uh, in what other scenarios in my life do I feel the need to be confident? Mm -hmm. Or do I feel the need like, oh, I need more confidence? And usually it's when like you perceive like some sort of challenge, right? So if I tell you like, hey, you know, you're going to have a very hard job interview or you're going to have this hard exam, then you're going to want to like do something about it, like study mm -hmm. to like, you know, to make yourself feel confident. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is that, you know, the more you think people are different than you, uh, the more you're going to need to be confident. It, it's kind of like, you know, there is a road and there is a reward. Like you want to connect with someone or you want to get the mm -hmm. girl or whatever it is. And basically you, you, you see a wall in between you and what you want. And so what most people do is they say, how can I climb that wall? Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I need more money. I need to hit the gym. I need to do this. I need to be cool. I need to do that. But when you realize that the best interaction in your life are characterized by, uh, by comfort, you know, I ask, what, what I would ask myself is, how would I behave if I knew this, peop, this person from childhood? Like, what, how would I behave mm -hmm. if like, we played in the mud together at two years old? And what I realized is that the challenge is, to, um, is not to overcome the, the wall, is to realize that there is no wall. And so mm. you know, if you think you're about to fight a dragon... Like the Matrix. Basically, like, if you think that you're about to fight a dragon... Like, you're going to want to bring weapons. Mm -hmm. But if you realize that you're talking to basically a baby whose buddy's age, <laughs> then you can come chill. And he so, wouldn't come with your bows and arrows and shit. It'd be very yeah, stupid. And, and so basically, I changed, like, instead of, like, I feel like before, when I was younger, when I would approach a girl, I would try to, I would try to, like, be cool. You know, mm -hmm. I would try to be, like, you know, kind of, like, you know, you have this image of, like, James Bond. Yeah. Or, like, you know, you try to be, like, a bowler. And I completely changed. And then I realized, and, 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 and from that moment, I, I would basically approach people thinking, like, how would I approach them if, I, if we were childhood friends, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and yeah, and I, and I think that the, 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 the question, you know, whenever you're, you're faced with a situation where, you know, it's about talking to people, right? Like we're not talking about doing some crazy stunts. We're talking about talking to people, which is something you've done your whole life. The question is not, how can I be more confident to feel at ease? But it's, how can I change my perspective so I realize I don't need any confidence? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that goes back to the games. Like, a lot of people, they think they're playing chess. They think they're, mm -hmm. like, playing, like, you know, they, they, they think they're, they're, like, in the UFC cage. And it's like, <laughs> no, like, you, you're literally, like, playing Play-Doh. Like, relax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I dare you to do a video on that. Um, so, no, so, so that's, like, like, that's, again, goes... We, you know, with the narratives because mm -hmm. your behavior is always consistent with the narrative in your mind. Of what you're thinking is going on. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of things that, I, that, that brought up for me. One of them, have you ever seen Tony Robbins? Uh, I mean, I, I know who he is. I've seen, I think I've, once in, in the plane, I've seen his, uh, he has a documentary on Netflix. Yeah, I'm not your guru. Yeah, I've seen I have that not seen the, that. I've seen that on the plane. Um, I mean, I know who he is. I, I never like you know met him mm. or never followed like any he went and did a talk in in austin there's this intro talk that he does because he does like the whole weekend things but he does a, he does this talk which is the same exact talk every time i know that because i've seen it on youtube before i saw it in person um and it's this four hour talk where he will walk you through the same four hour talk that he gives but um it, it he, he he has like all the emotions down where it feels like he's giving for the first time and it's really cool and one of the things he'll do is he'll be like, okay, so I want to do this exercise and I want you to like get up and just, you know, kind of move around and talk to people next to you. First, talk to the person, talk to people like um, you just don't have any time for them. Like they're just beneath you. Like you're better than them. You don't really want to talk to them. Like fuck them. You don't like them. They're, they're annoying you. Right. Now talk to somebody like it's just kind of like meh. They're just kind of there. And in between he like, you know, it gives a little, he kind of like leads it in. I'm just kind of speeding through it um, for the sake of this conversation. Yeah. But he's like, okay, so now talk to them like, you're just kind of indifferent towards them. Like, they're, you know, they're just a, a, a neighbor, but you're not like super friendly with them. They're just kind of there. Now talk to them like you're really happy to see them. Like you're having a great day and they're, you're happy to see them. And the last one he does is now talk to them like they're your long lost friend you haven't seen in years. Yeah. And then after that, he's like, well, what did you notice about your body language? In the first ones, you're, you're, you're a lot more hunched over, you're a lot more closed up, you're a lot more physically small, physically guarded. And in the last ones, you're a lot more open and large. And what, what you would see is when, with the last one, it'd be like, oh my God, like what's going on? And you're like, everyone's like big and loud. And the first one's like, yeah, like, well, hey, what's up? Mm. It's like, a, you're small and you're like quiet. And it's like, and what he would say, like, it was just an interesting thing to think is you could, you could, it's part of the thing when, when I, 
during some of my interactions, I was like, well, it's kind of weird that I'm kind of kneeling in front of this girl. Like, why am I not sitting down next to her? And yeah. so I just sat down next to her. Yeah. And it was like, well, how can you use your body to convey, like, to kind of, like, create the interaction that you want to create? Yeah, it's always like, ask yourself, how would I behave if I was already friends with this person? Yeah. And, and then just do that. Um, and Because uh, people reflect you. That's one thing that I've started to realize you. is that people, especially women, but people in general... They reflect what you put out. And if you put out like, I'm, I don't know if you're going to like me, then they're going to be like, I don't know if I'm going to like him. Or if you're like, if you put out like, this guy, like, I don't think this, I think I'm, like, this guy, I'm really, I admire him so much. Like, I, I don't know how I'm going to, like, he's probably annoyed that he has, he doesn't have the time to speak with me. Then they're probably going to think that too. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that people were kind of like, uh, emo- that's, what, that's why I said like your social interactions are your mirror because we're mm-hmm. kind of like emotional mirrors. Mm-hmm. And so if you talk to someone and, and they're like anxious or whatever, like they're just mirroring yeah. you really. Um, and like an anxious person would open up if you're more open. It might not be immediate, but after a little bit of you being more open, they'd be more mm-hmm. open. But, but what I also I think is, a, is a, there's a subtlety also, I, mm-hmm. I, I think in, in, in what you're saying is, I think a lot of people, they do this mistake where um, they, um, you know, your behavior, you know, so your behavior comes out of, of like, you know, uh, I would say like your perception informs your attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people, they try to fake the, the action part, right? So, so, so they, mm-hmm. they, they focus, they focus along like their, 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 their tone of voice, they focus on their body language. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of like... Frankenstein, right? it's kind of like trying to like put <laughs> yes. like, like like you need to start from from the essence. I mean, obviously, like I, I think those are good tips. You know, like try to act like a friend, try to sit next to the person. Mm-hmm. Like those are good tips. But I think that where people should really focus, and I don't see a lot of people doing that, is, mm-hmm. is on the essence. And I think uh, there's actually a quote that I really love by uh, Sun Tzu uh, okay. in the Art of War. He says he says something like uh, I might misquote a bit, but he says something like everyone can see. The tactics thereby I conquer, but what none can see is a strategy out of which victory is evolved. It's like you can see, so you, you look at someone who's mm-hmm. interacting and you're saying, oh, you see here, he, his chin was up, or oh, he did mm-hmm. this, or oh, he did that. And so then you find yourself trying to emulate that, mm-hmm. but, but, but what, what you don't, but like, unless you, you, you really like basically have the right narrative in mind. Yeah. So basically, if you have the right narrative in mind, everything takes care of itself. Like when you're with your friends, yeah, you don't yeah. worry about your posture. You don't worry no. about your body language. You don't worry about that. You're thing. having so, fun and so you're just kind of so, open. So, so you're present, right? And so that's the goal. The goal is to be present. And once you're present, everything else takes care of itself. Mm-hmm. But a lot of guys, especially I would say like people who are really into like the dating, like yes. you know, pickup artists, whatever. Yes. They, tr- they basically like they enter an interaction and they have like, they're like in the control room of like a thousand things. <laughs> yeah, they try yeah. to control everything. It's like, no, like, yeah. you, you can't do it like that. Like you have yeah, that's, to... they're trying to circumvent the inner work that needs exactly. to be done. Uh, it's, it's funny because that's what I was about to bring that up when there was a pause in the conversation. But, I, but like you brought it up because that's what the conversation was going in that direction. I think some, not just like the dating gurus, but definitely like, like I would say the biggest perpetrators of this. Um, but there's a lot of people that tend to be like, okay, so it's, it's just how you look. And um, it's not how you are. And I think a lot of people just aren't connected to themselves at that deeper level. And it's not so much that they're looking unconfident or they're looking like they're uncomfortable or they're looking this way. It's just they need to connect at themselves at a deeper level and try to change who they are rather than how they appear. And you can tweak, like, I, I tend to, I still work on my body language. Um, I still work on my tone of voice. And like do that on, in particular, but I would say that's like ten to twenty, not even twenty. I'd say that's like ten to twenty percent of my efforts, and like eighty to ninety percent of my efforts are like, who am I underneath? Yeah, I would say that, that that's like the seasoning of your dish. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, you need it, but like you're not gonna eat the spices. Like you, mm-hmm. you need the actual like meat and vegetable and mm-hmm. rice and whatever you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I I like that analogy. You're all full of analogies. I like an analogy. I mean, I think there are good ways to think about things. It's natural. I mean, it's a natural. It's because it's like okay, so you know this thing well. Yeah. You know like how a tennis match works really well. Well, it's just okay. Instead of a tennis match, like this is a social interaction, but your mind instinctively understands. Oh, okay, I just sub this for this, and then this for this, yeah. and then now like I the understand mechanism, it. Yeah, the mechanism is the same. Yeah, yeah. you just uh, switch the variables. Yeah, exactly. Talking about programming now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is this is an awesome. I'm really having a good time here. Um, 
kind of running out of questions to say. So I guess I will uh, throw the tennis ball over to you and I'm curious if you have anything that you want to talk about. Anything that's on your mind, any like new things that you're you're discovering with social interactions that um, that's just kind of intriguing you right now. Mm. Um, let me think. No pressure. I think. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the thing, I, something I can think of is, I think. I think. One of my challenge, I think, is um, is like how do I frame the problem mm. in a way that people um, relate to it? Because and that's also one of the reasons I, I do the, the the challenges because a, a lot of people uh, they're not even aware that something's wrong mm. uh, or they think that it's about you know other people. You know, mm. it's like they think yeah. it's about the shy engineers or it's about the the socially anxious mm. or whatever. And and one of my challenge. Um, when I make videos and stuff is uh, or when I just think about how do I you know spread the message mm. is uh, how do I frame the problem in a way that people are like oh yeah like that's you know because the biggest problem is not like once I, I feel like once I get someone's attention mm. I feel like um, I can make a point or like I, I feel okay I feel like once I get someone's attention I have a high probability of uh, of like they're, res- they're responsive to my to mm. my point but I think I miss a lot of people um by because um, their narrative and your solution don't match up, or they don't even think that they, they, they have a they, problem. Yeah, maybe. you know, so that, yeah, like if, if you if you're not if you're not aware that uh, you know if you think everything's fine, then mm. everything's fine. You're not going to want to look for a fix. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're not going to look for a fix, and even if I may tell you that there is a fix, uh, if I don't, if, if the words I, I choose are not the right ones, you, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to think like, oh. Uh, you should meet my friend, uh, yeah. this guy, you know, and it's like, no, no, like I'm, I'm talking about, and I think <laughs> something that's very interesting yeah. is, uh, so, you know, b- before starting uh, doing YouTube, I, I was doing those like subscriber challenge with, with people yeah. just to like help them out. And uh, I did that with maybe like 60, like maybe 60, 70 people mm-hmm. in like uh, two years prior. And so I would often have people like recommending me like their, their friends or close friends or whatever. And something I noticed is that Many times, you know, I, I would meet someone where, you know, like, it's like one of their closest friends introduced me to them mm. by saying, hey, like, this guy, like, he, he needs, like, you know, he needs your help or he needs, he, he needs to, like, you know, mm-hmm. get out of his shell a little bit and stuff. So, you know, we're meeting within that context. And so mm-hmm. I meet them and I'm like, so, uh, you know, why, why are you here? Like, what's, uh, what's going on? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, uh, my friends told me uh, we should meet and mm-hmm. stuff. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, uh, well... If you see a girl uh, walking by, like, can you uh, can you talk to her? And they'll mm. be like, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do it. And then I, and, and then I remember two vivid examples. One, I was like, no, no, but like, I understand you can like talk to. I mean, I, I know you can like you know ask your direction or yeah. you can ask like what time is it. But like, if there is a cute girl you want to flirt with, like, can you go like you know flirt with her, get her number? Mm. And then he'll be like, no. And this other guy once I was like, can you do that? And he'll be like, yes. And then I was like, okay, when's the last time you did it? And they were like, oh, actually, I, I never done it. So it's, like, it's like, I felt, I, and, and so, you know, it's like I have to pierce through like yeah. three layers for the person to feel comfortable yeah. saying, actually, like, you're right, like, I, I can't do that. It, because it, it's funny you say that because I have a few friends who, um, are the same, the same guy, I don't know if he specifically says it, but I have a few friends who were like, yeah, like, like, I'm, I'm comfortable with girls. have a nice smile, but you're like, <laughs> yeah. fuck you. No, I love him, I love him to death. Like, this is because I love him. Um, <laughs> He knows it, um, and uh, actually, he's not. He doesn't do this specifically. He doesn't. He doesn't say this. But I, I have a. I'm trying to think of. I don't remember who it was, but we were in a specific situation where he's like, "Oh yeah, like she's really cute." And I'm like, um, "Like I, he was. He's been saying like he's confident with girls, and he's like, okay, like going up to girls." And I'm like, "Okay, go up to her." And he's like, "No," and I'm like, "What? Well, I thought you were confident with girls, dude." Um, and it's not like. It's wrong to be nervous. It's not like it's wrong to have hesitation. I have hesitation a lot, and there was a time where um, I wasn't comfortable hitting on girls. So, like, it's it it's all about are you aware of how you work? And like, and I think a lot of it isn't just necessarily, necessarily that, but there's like I think people they they don't want others to think that they're that they don't have it down. Like, mm. like maybe they're ashamed for not having social skills or not being able to have social. Um, I guess 
courage is the right word here. Not being able to take social risks and have social courage is like, oh, I can do that, I can do that, but like, they're just afraid that people, of, of, they're afraid of showing that they're nervous. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a, I would say like, there's a certain vulnerability, but I would say that that vulnerability is also tied to like how you value things, right? So mm. if you're very focused on outcome, it's going to be very hard for you mm. because the probability, you know, like when you meet People are random, like, mm. you know, some girls have boyfriends. Some girls are not going to be in the right Some moment. girls have boyfriends? Like, you know, what? Like, <laughs> so, you know, th- th- there's probably... And they're prob- not me? You know, like, like, <laughs> like, like, there are probabilities, right? Like, yeah. there's probabilities. And so, if you're very driven by outcome, by, like, the external outcome, mm. um, those probabilities, you know, you're not going to like those probabilities. No. Or, like, you know, or, like, it's going to make you feel bad. But if you realize that what's important is that you're true to yourself, mm. then, you know, those probabilities don't really matter anymore. Or even if you are like really attached to probabilities, it's like if the probability is like one percent that you're gonna get a number, well, you have unlimited retries. Mm. So this yeah. is like talk to a hundred girls, and then your probability is a hundred percent. But I, I also want to say is that I think that people use different mechanism. So I, I, I will. Uh, so for example, I think that a lot of guys. It's, and it, actually, it's very interesting. You, you can see that, especially like when uh, I work with people during the mm-hmm. day, is that some guys, you know. Uh, you know, you can find them, uh, I mean, not anymore, but you can find them at a club or mm-hmm. at a bar, you know, like drunk, like hooking up with, you know, someone they wouldn't mm-hmm. want you to see. Yeah. Uh, and, but then during the day, they're like fucking like the most, uh, how do you say it? They have the, 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 the craziest standard, you know, oh, like this girl, like, <laughs> oh, you know, I, I don't yeah. like her hair or I don't like this. So you know, it takes some self honesty. It's like, dude, like, shut up, like, yeah, like, like you know. So that's why I always say, like, if like you you're think- just trying to feel in control of your sex life and your love life when, really, in reality, you're you feel like you can't get what you want. There's other, yeah. other problems here. And so I always say, like, if you're thinking about it, if there's a debate in your mind, mm-hmm. should I talk to this person or not? Mm-hmm. It means that you want to, because otherwise, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't even enter your mind. And also, I see, like, you know, sometimes people they. They tell me, so, you know, I'm French and sometimes people, they, they say, oh, like, but how is it? Like, there's difference and stuff. I find personally that people are very similar. It's just that they hide their social anxiety in different mm-hmm. ways. I would say, for example, French people, uh, do, and, and I thought about this when you talked about Tony Robbins, mm-hmm. is they act really cold. You know, mm-hmm. French people will look at you like you're beneath them, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're so cool and stuff. Uh, and you may think like, oh, you know, those people are so cool, whatever, but the truth and I've been on the other side, is that mm-hmm. actually they don't know how to talk to people. And so it's mm-hmm. easier for them, it's easier to act like I'm too cool for you yeah. than to basically be vulnerable and, and, and talk to the person yeah. next to you. See, I'm American, so the way that I, and I actually don't do this now, I just kind of like, I guess I'm, I'm, I've changed the way, but I used the way that I used to hide my vulnerabilities, I used to get really loud yeah. really boisterous I used to be like I used to get like become the life of the party because I wanted to like pe- people be like oh no don't look at my nervousness over here look at this guy look at this fun guy I over here like I'm not a very uh, you know, American like bro like, yeah yeah <laughs> that's what I that's who I was in college for the most part I was like hey don't, don't look at this like nervousness over here I'm gonna I'm gonna like do a big song and dance so you look at this guy that's like a, yeah it's like a, almost a very childlike you know it's like you, 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 you see kids and uh, you, there's kids and like you know like I mean, I remember, like, in elementary school, right, like, this cute girl, like, in the recess, mm-hmm. whatever, and, like, you're playing soccer, and, like, you know, you've never played better, and you're, like, you know, you're, yeah. like, you're trying to play so good, yeah. or you're trying to, like, if someone knows how to do a handstand, or suddenly now they want to do a handstand, you know, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're trying to, like, be, like, oh, I'm yeah. cool. Uh, there's no, I think that's kind of fun, too. Like, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it shouldn't be, like, the main point of your interaction with girls. But I think it's kind of fun to be like, hey, let me show off for you. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's fun. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think there is a lot of uh, self-honesty involved. And mm-hmm. it's always yeah, like, yeah. It's you, like, why you, am I doing this? What, why are you doing this? What do you mm-hmm. want? And sometimes you can see people, you know, um, you know, they go talk to someone and, you know, they're a bit too uncomfortable to to, you know, go for what they want. And mm-hmm. so they'll end up, like, talking about, you know, they'll end up talking about, like, travels. And yeah. they'll end up talking about, you know, yeah. like, everything. But and they the never said, they, hey, you're cute. Exactly. Yeah, they, they'll talk about everything yeah. but the fact that they're attracted. And actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm also <laughs> going to make a wink to a friend of mine. Okay. This was a while ago. And we were in Paris. And uh, this was maybe, like, I want to say, like, three years ago. This was a while ago. And they were in Paris. And uh, it's, we're two, and there's two girls sitting next to us, and I start, so I initiate the interaction, but then because of the way the seats, just the way that the table was organized, yeah. like, he was 
just next to her and yeah. I was a bit like far and then like some other people came out and he talked to that girl for like maybe an hour, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like just them. And, but whatever, I don't know what he talked about, but whatever, he probably talked, I mean, actually I know he talked about travels and stuff uh, because he's really well traveled. Uh, the point is eventually we decide to go somewhere else mm -hmm. and then I have like literally, and I, it just happened, you know, we're a group at this point of like maybe eight people. Yeah. And so kind of randomly, I end up, uh, you know, we're working on the sidewalk and mm -hmm. I just end up next to her. And literally like in eight minutes, I said everything that I had to say. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we ended up like, you know, uh, kissing. Like, Enjoying you know, each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. In whatever and, way you did. And my friend was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you what the fuck? Like, what, what are you talking about for this long? And so I think yeah. a lot of people like, they, you know, they, they're not... That's why it's always important to ask yourself, like, what, like, what do I want? Like, what, mm. what, what am I doing? Like, what do I? What want? is my purpose and here? Then, and then just do that because it's very easy to get, uh, I think, sidetracked. I really like that, and I think that's a great place to end on because it's like it's super pertinent information, um, and I think that's a lot of the problem that a lot of guys have. And like, oh, I'm really comfortable with women, but then they don't end up getting to where they go. And I have a few friends that I'm not going to call out, but they know who they are. Or I hope they know who they are. I don't even think they honestly think it's a problem. But they have that exact same thing where they're really comfortable with women. They're great at making friends with women. But when it comes to making anything sexual, like even in conversation with me, they'll be like, oh, no, 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 I don't do that. Or like, oh, no, like I just want to be nice. Like, oh, no, you have to like, you have to like warm up, warm her up to it. And it's like, there's some truth to like being calibrated to her. But there's, I, I think you need to be comfortable with your desires 100%. Yeah. Um, I guess right before the, we end then, um, there's a really great analogy that has to do just with that that I think ties into what you were saying earlier. That's perfect, which is your Lamborghini analogy. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to explain that. Yeah, perfect. well, I mean, I have the Lamborghini analogy. So basically what I'm saying is, uh, you know, I think in uh, a huge part of my life, I was always very reticent to express my desire or my interest because I felt that if the desire wasn't reciprocated, then, you know... Uh, you know, it was basically a loss for me. Like I was mm -hmm. like losing something, and I, it, 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 I looked bad, right? So you wanted, you needed it to be given back. Yeah, you know, and and that, and actually, you can see that by you know, first of all, when you're a kid, you ask, you know, your friend, hey, like, do you think she likes me, whatever? Yeah. At a later stage, it's like five signs that like she's into you. Yeah. And like all this bullshit, uh, and then one day I realized that, um, you know, first, so I realized, so it, it comes in succession. So the first thing is. Um, uh, what is the first thing? The first thing is, uh, you know, when you find something beautiful, whether it's a woman, a man, a car, a landscape, a painting, a tree, like whatever it is, you don't, there's no deliberation. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing is beautiful or it's not. Like I, I can just show you pictures. I mean, that's why mm -hmm. it, like, like I show you pictures with, like in an instant. So uh, there's no emotion in it. It's a fact. Like you, mm -hmm. it might be your opinion. Maybe you like this and I don't like it, mm -hmm. but uh, and it's your opinion. But you, in your in the experience of your life, like you experience this as a fact. Uh, it's a fact that is as emotionless as this table is brown. Uh, you know, well the sky is blue. Well, I mean not today. Uh, you know, this uh, car is beautiful. This painting is ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a fact, right? Um, and so the first question is, why can't you express? Uh, those opinion with the same light, like, like why can't you say to a girl she's beautiful with the same emotional lightness as mm -hmm. this table is brown? Um, and so then I, I started thinking, you know, uh, if someone uh, parks a nice car or if you go to someone's house and they have a nice painting or, or whatever images uh, you prefer uh, and you say, oh, I, I like that, you know, the person is not going to think that you're going to steal them uh, or that you're going to rub it or that you... That you are any in any way like ill intentions, like the, mm -hmm. it just means you like it. Uh, and if you tell me you like a Lamborghini, and I know you don't have money to buy a Lamborghini, mm -hmm. no one's gonna make fun. Like no one's gonna make fun of you. Literally, like if you tell your friends, hey, I wanna, oh, did you see this ten million dollar house? And you don't have, like no, no one's gonna make fun of you because we know that it's okay to desire something that's desirable. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would go even further, and I think that that comes with a, a bit more experiences. Once you start meeting a lot of people, especially when you start meeting a lot of women, uh, you realize that um, finding attractive women that want to go on a date with you or on a few dates with you, like that's, that's just a question of probability and like that's not that hard. What's really hard is finding people that you actually want to hang out with, that you actually want to spend time with and that you want to be in a relationship with. And so, you know, like beauty, like it's, it's really nothing. It's, it's like the first domino of a very long list of domino. 
And mm. so you should be able to tell someone that they're cute. Um, in the same way that you say this table is brown, like it, it shouldn't, you know, you, you think that someone is cute whether or not you talk to them, uh, whether or not, um, and whether or not you, you like them, whether or not they like you, like it's just, it's just one truth and you should be able to express it with the lightness it deserves. Uh, and if you can't, uh, basically just a symptom that your perspective on your desires mm. are, are a bit off. That's, that's a perfect, perfectly said. Um, I'm going to cycle the camera again because it's one minute away from 30 minutes where it will cut off. Give me two seconds to do that. Bam. Um, so where can people learn more about your thing and watch your videos? And uh, my video is going to be up in uh, however long. I don't want to say a specific time, but um, where can people watch so, that? So um, you can go on YouTube, Social Animal. Uh, if you type Social Animal on the search bar, or you can do youtube.com slash slash social animal uh yeah that's the, that's my hat I, I just i don't sell those i just made one for myself uh and um yeah basically uh youtube.com slash social animal and uh, that's that's it cool shit thank you so much for Man, coming thank you yeah it was great that was a really cool discussion yeah i was really happy about it it flowed like super well it flowed like super well oh my god <laughs> Nice, thank you. Yeah, for sure, man. I had a really good time. I, I, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Need a Forrest Gump right there. Okay, I'll let you, uh, stop. I'll, I'll let you just. Thanks. Because I, I, I know. Oh, yeah, that, the whole button. I know that I would want to do everything myself.